So in the last video, we added the date picker widget. Now, one thing that's really nice about the jQuery UI is you not only get all of these wonderful widgets, but they also provide all of these very useful options that you can use with whatever widget you decide to go with. And one of the great things about this is they're very easy to use. Once you understand the basic format, they're very easy to plug in. And they designed it very similar to the way we use properties in CSS. And if you took my series in CSS, you will remember that we use squiggly brackets. And then we put all the different types of properties that we want inside those squiggly brackets. And then, of course, we add the value. And it's exactly similar in jQuery. We just use squiggly brackets. Then we specify the property that we want. So very, very similar again. So, of course, within these parentheses, we need a squiggly bracket. And there we go. Now you can just specify the properties that you want to use. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is called number of months. So we're just going to go ahead and write this in. Now, these are case sensitive. So if you're not sure, just select it from the IntelliSense that you get from Notepad++. And there you can see we've got a capital M and a capital O. So make sure if you type these in manually, you want to get the case right. And then similar to CSS, we use a colon, and then we specify the value. In this case, we're just going to pick three. Now, what does this property do? Well, say you want to expand this out to three months. You want to show all three of those months at the same time. That's actually what this property does, so it's very useful. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh our page. And actually, we need to expand this out to see this. And there you can see we've got three months now, back to back to back. Pretty nice. Let's go ahead and minimize this again. Now, you can also add some nice drop downs to the calendar. And one of those is the change month property. So all we do is put in change month. And again, it's case sensitive. And we don't use a numeric value. This is just a simple true or false. Well, chances are you're going to use true because you want to see this in the calendar. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll refresh our page and take a look at that. We have a drop down now that will allow the user to select any month that they want. That's pretty cool. Now you can also do this by year if you want. So that's pretty cool. So we can actually go ahead and just specify year here if you want them to be able to select by year. And we'll go ahead and refresh. And now look, now we've got this by year. So that's really cool as well. Now you might be wondering, can I add as many different properties as I want? You can. And all you do is put a comma right here and then you can add in the next property. So there's another property called show week. And that allows us to show all the different weeks of the particular year that you're in. And this is just a simple true or false as well. So let's go ahead and refresh. And there you can see we've got all these weeks numbered now. Take a look at that. And if we go forward in our calendar to April, you can see they're numbered appropriately. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. And let's go ahead and just set this back to one property. Now, certain properties only go together with other properties. For instance, we can change the text for the column that we just added in the show week property for uh, the week column, those numbers that we just saw. So if we go ahead and add week header, and then you can put in whatever text you want for the week. Uh, you could just write in week if you wanted. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and refresh our page. Whoops, I forgot the colon. That'll get you every time. Let's go ahead and save this and we'll refresh our page. And there you can see now we've got this spelled out as week if you wanted to do that. Now, you know how sometimes you're in a calendar and you see the other days of the previous month and the next month? You can do that as well. And we can do that with the show other months property. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you can see the IntelliSense for Notepad++ brings that right up. This is what's very nice about Notepad++. It recognizes which property you're trying to select. And this again is just a simple true or false. See how easy these are to use? Very, very easy. And so you'll see what we get here. And there you can see we've got the days from the previous month and the days from the next month. So that's very, very useful as well. Okay, we will continue on with date picker properties in the next video. See you guys then.